Well, let's turn our attention now to, uh, well, doing business, the challenges, security notwithstanding, the government seems to be doing a thing or two to ensure that uh, we do things a little differently. Let's get Mark White to take us through that. Mark White. Well, Chamberlain, you're definitely right on that one. On the 18th of May, that's the 18th of this month, uh, the acting president was said to have signed three far-reaching executive orders to ease business, fast-track budget submissions, and promote made-in-Nigeria products. Now, to discuss and shed a little light on what those executive orders will mean and how they intend to implement it is Dr. Jumoke Oduwale, who is a senior special assistant to the president on industry trade and investment. You're mm -hmm. welcome to Sunrise Thank Daily. You. Thank you. Well, this time around, you're in my turf. Right? Yes. <laughs> Last time you were in Lagos. Yes. Well, it's been uh, how many days since that? Um, ex since those executive orders were signed? At least three. Uh, how many three days now? Three working days. Yes. About, they're about. Yes. Um, and people are a little anxious. They want mm -hmm. to know precisely what does this mean and how is it going to be implemented. But let's first start with what were those executive orders and. Yeah, let's start from there, because okay. I don't want to have to ask okay. too many at once. Okay, thank you. I'm really glad that we have this opportunity to speak more about this issue. The first directive on transparency and ease of doing business is really putting teeth or putting, it's the back end of the reform that we've been talking about, the NAP60, the PEBEC 60-day reforms, entry and exit of people, all sorts of transparency, all the things that underpin operationally now. That's what you have in the directives. You also have, in addition to that, you also have a one government policy and a default approval policy. Very radical. <laughs> mm, yes. A one government policy. I'm yes. sure a lot of people are dying to hear what that will be about. Yes. Now, we hear something about if you have a document that is already with the federal government in one agency, you do not have to reproduce mm. it. Uh, when you go to another government agency, mm. that a photocopy will do. Yes. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about that, because we've been hearing a lot of people, quite a number of people, complaining that in some instances they have documents with government, they go to another agency of government, and they insist yeah. that these things must be produced yeah. before they are tended to. So this is exactly why, this is what we're responding to. Remember that the Ease of Doing Business initiative is to save cost and time for MSMEs in particular. Now, we believe that the administration should take the burden of doing the background checks and verification and not put it onto the MSME. So that's why if you have prima facie evidence, a photocopy, then that agency will have to liaise with their colleagues to verify your photocopy, not the other way around. Mm, that's interesting. How is it going? I mean, you've already spelled out how it's going to be implemented or how, what, that, what should work out. But in the in the event that that doesn't work out, in the event that that is not the situation, what can the person who is affected do? The person, so that leads us to the default policy. Mm -hmm. If you are to apply, okay, let's start from the beginning. You need transparency. So when all the procedures are on the website, mm -hmm. all what you need, the time, the cost, then you know that if I apply for this approval, within 14 days I'm to be granted. And if I don't get it, that leads you to the default policy. Then I can apply to the supervising minister to issue me whatever certificate I need. It's deemed approved. Mm. The transparency yeah. part now is that everything will be on the website. Yes, So and in the premises. What website are we talking about here? Every MDA has a website, mm -hmm. or ought to have a website, within the next 21 days. And all the relevant information that you're a service provider, so all the people visiting your website, all what is important to them, the requirements, the duration, the process outlined, all the steps that would need to be taken with the cost and the times need to be on the website and the person responsible. What's monitoring the agencies to ensure that they're complying with some of those things? The heads of the agencies are directly responsible to make sure that the websites are up to date at all times. The, the ministers supervise the heads of the agencies the council supervises the ministers. So we can expect within the next 21 days that if you intend to do any sort of business requiring government approval or government intervention, you can go to the website and know precisely what it is that will be required yes. of you? Yes, the deadline for all the MDAs is 21 days. So at the end or at the expiration of that time, 
their websites will be current. A number of MDAs are already current because, you know, PEBEC has been working on this since October last year. Mm -hmm. So if you go on immigration website, custom website, CAC website today, they're current. An interesting part of uh, this implementation is uh, the fact that we expected the, the, the Nigerian ports are expected to work 24 hours yes. in the next 30 days. Yes. How is this going to work out? So the premise is that it was 24 hours before. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done. There are things that need to be put in place. And we've been talking about this for about a year now. The MD of NPA mm -hmm. is very willing to push this through. She needs some support. You need um, power. You need the, to fix the roads. All those are in process. But we thought, why wait? You can have it operational. It's a matter of the political will. You make, even if it's one terminal, it needs to be open. You make arrangements for electricity. You make arrangements for the staffing. And you just proceed. Because waiting and waiting and to get everything perfect, we believe is just not going to work. Nigerian people need to have, you know, the traffic congestion is quite bad. And there are plans to fix the road already. But moving at night would then help. Everybody doesn't have to be on the road at the same time. So we're determined to go forward with this at this time. How are key uh, stakeholders? I, I know that the acting president did request a meeting with uh, the implementing officers, middle mm -hmm. cadre mm -hmm. civil servants, to, to, to you know, get feelers from them mm -hmm. and what their concerns. Has that meeting held already? No, it's on Wednesday morning at 9. And we understand it's going to be broadcast live? Yes. Is that the situation? Yes. So definitely. Uh, but what are the feelers that you are getting? I mean, being a special assistant, I'm sure that you must be, uh, you know, getting some wind from what, from how, you know, civil servants are responding to this. So what His Excellency, the, the acting president, has decided is that rather than wait for the circulars to cascade down the civil service, he will personally address levels 8 to 14 on Wednesday morning to explain to them the importance of their role and the actions they take to the Nigerian economy. He made a very strong statement last Thursday, and he's determined that this is just going to be pushed through. So to explain to them exactly what they need to do so they understand the importance of their role. Like everybody that delays, you're costing companies money. Those companies are employing people that are giving jobs that your child may need. It's a ripple effect. and. There's been like bottlenecks, so we need to ease all that and make sure that things are flowing quickly with less cost. I wonder how, I mean, I was asking about feelers that you are getting from the civil service. The civil service is fully cooperative. The head of civil service has been on this process. She's actually a member of the council. The acting secretary to the government has also been on the process, and they're breaking down exactly the tasks that each MDA has to implement. The MDAs have to enter service level agreements because some MDAs need other MDAs to implement their work. So it's unfair to say, I need two weeks to say, for instance, issue a, a company certificate in co of incorporation when I know that I have an FIRS interface. My work would depend on whether FIRS would also cooperate within my two week timeline. So MDAs have to partner and collaborate and make sure that the timelines are realistic and that they adhere to them. So that's what we're pushing for at this time. I'm going to be 